So uh, I would like to touch on uh, important um, topics um, related to the health of uh, teenagers. Um, so uh, some conditions that we need to be aware of uh, during uh, this important uh, phase. Um, so first of, uh, first of all, for the key health aspects, it's that it's important uh, for uh, your teenagers um, to, to have an example uh, or an idea uh, to what healthy meals or healthy physical activities to do uh, or, or, or to choose as their lifestyle because uh, it, it, it's most likely to stick with them uh, until uh, they're adults and therefore it will be useful uh, for them uh, in the future uh, as in they will be healthier because the the lifestyle that they have uh, built during teenage years uh, will stick with them and will therefore prevent some diseases uh, chronic diseases like diabetes uh, type 2 uh, cardiovascular diseases heart diseases that are all um, impacted by uh, uh, lifestyle choices. Um, also, it's important uh, as a parent to identify or um, uh, look whether uh, 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 your, your teen is having a certain nutritional deficiency, which I will uh, discuss later, and also to be aware of any evidence of uh, the delayed or early onset of puberty which can sometimes be a sign of uh, some medical diseases that need to be looked at um, more uh, in, in, in more details and provided treatments. Uh, all of my colleague Maizan will be discussing about eating disorders that can affect their mental health uh, and, and um, uh, we will discuss later about them. So these are the challenges. Uh, so uh, during the, the, the growth uh, uh, in the phase of puberty, uh, the teenagers have increased um, demand to their body uh, in order to achieve certain height, certain weight. Um, and it's all important uh, for, uh, for their daily nutrition to fulfill this metabolism. However, during this process, there are many factors that can affect this. It's important to just be aware. For example, uh, they would start comparing their buddies to, uh, to their friends or uh, certain people on social media. Uh, and, uh, and it's important to recognize this, to know exactly what it means to have a healthy body. And it's important to be well uh, informed that it's natural for a body composition to have changes because of the biological uh, process that occurs and uh, this can be different for everyone uh, and uh, there's just no ideal uh, body during this phase and it's more important to focus on what they eat what activities uh, they choose uh, in the time being. There are also many cultural factors that affect this uh, from, the, from the family, uh, you know, the, the, the food that uh, we, in, uh, we tend to provide on the table. For example, in Indonesia, uh, 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 my grandma always has a, a high um, uh, cholesterol food on the table. And that's just because it's tradition to just serve this food from uh, from um, uh, parent to parent, um, but uh, 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 it's important to be aware that uh, fruits need to be uh, implemented and fibers need uh, to be consumed as well uh, to achieve a good healthy um, condition. Right and. Um, Regarding puberty, which is all triggered by uh, mainly these two hormones, but not limited to them, uh, and uh, other growth uh, factors. So uh, growth hormones and these um, two, two, two types of hormones um, trigger uh, the whole process of puberty with uh, uh, that affect uh, tissues in their body or in our bodies when we were all uh, uh, 
undergoing this process um, uh, that affects um, a, a bigger muscle mass and the changes in the body composition, changes in the distribution of fat uh, for uh, girls especially. It changes uh, their chest area, their hip area for males. It changes the shoulders area and uh, it, it also they become more self-conscious of the hair growth that develops in the arm that develop in the armpit and the pubic area uh, and also not just physical changes that occur that but uh, you know the quest for independence uh, the self-esteem uh, this is all uh, of course affected by these hormones so they undergo some emotional uh, changes and psychological changes that we as parents uh, need to accommodate and need to understand um, of course and need to guide them so that uh, they uh, they do not uh, fall into uh, mental health issues and they develop confidence during this phase now uh, it's important for parents to understand when this should start the whole biological um, process. So for girls, it can start as young as they're nine years old, so uh, uh, developing breasts or even their first period can start at that age, but it can also be as late as at 12 years old. Now, outside of this age range, we have to be aware of uh, any delayed puberty or even an early onset of puberty. And any delayed or early uh, sign of puberty can be a sign of a medical condition that has not been diagnosed yet. So uh, if you are in doubt, it doesn't always mean uh, that when they are late in their period or uh, they do not have a wet dream yet, that something serious is going on. But of course, it's something that uh, we need to be medically aware of so we can uh, do something uh, before uh, complications start to happen, um, of course, uh, we, we will uh, we will go through some examinations to uh, discover this further. Now, the most common nutritional problems that occur in otherwise healthy uh, teenagers are uh, deficiencies related to some supplements because um, in in the teenagers, I think uh, uh, they, they consume more uh, sugar uh, and carbs and uh, forgetting about the importance of supplements. And uh, the most common one uh, uh, that's found in teenagers uh, is iron deficiency anemia or B12 deficiency. And this can be a problem when it happens because it really disturbs uh, or, uh, their ability to concentrate during school, so that's that could be one of the symptoms of anemia. So, uh, uh, if your uh, teen, if your child has fo has difficulty focusing in class, uh, or complaining that they're constantly tired, they're looking more pale, um, they have hair loss, or uh, or their skin's just dry, it's it's probably worth checking whether they have anemia or not uh, because of deficiency in this nutrition. Um, the other important uh, um, issue is uh, related to the pandemic and that's a reduced vitamin D. Uh, and since we, are, we have all been contained uh, under the roof, uh, and not getting enough sunlight, uh, which uh, are the main, which is the main source of vitamin D, uh, then uh, we all tend to have um, insufficient level of vitamin D. Now, this is very important uh, for their bone health uh, because people with low vitamin D uh, can get prone to broken bones or fractures. They can also complain from time to time about being just generally tired even though they have rested enough and can sometimes suffer from uh, intermittent bone pains. Now another um, source of supplement that's related to this uh, would be calcium and calcium is very important to take during this period of life because at some time during adulthood uh, at the age of 23 or above calcium absorption is not as good 
as during the uh, the, the teenage phase, and um, low calcium can make them um, at risk of developing osteoporosis or low bone minerals during adult and during the elderly life, uh, and make them as well prone to having uh, bone fractures. And a uh, decreased amount of protein, for example, if they don't eat uh, uh, enough protein in their body can affect their muscle mass growth. And that can lead to some uh, serious malnutrition problem. Uh, although I think uh, uh, in, in, uh, basically in Indonesia, this, this problem still exists, but as well as in other uh, developing countries, which can present as uh, uh, more severe and can stunt their growth. Now, uh, uh, the final uh, issue that come uh, often uh, at the clinic that we encounter is constipation in teenagers. Now, uh, this can also be something be easily prevented if they consume enough fibers and water in their diet um, that uh, improve their digestive function and produce healthy bowel movements. It's, it's probably a good idea to bring your teen uh, to the doctor if, uh, if you doubt whether they are underweight or, or obese. Uh, later, my colleague Jocelyn will talk about uh, body mass index, how to, uh, how to uh, generally measure that based on their body uh, weight and height uh, to classify uh, 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 this nutritional status uh, but also if they they look completely well but they have any of these symptoms uh, tiredness lack of energy dizziness fainting blackouts uh, appearing paler than usual or having shaky hands or tremor or they have palpitations or noticeable heartbeat uh, this could all uh, be a sign of a nutritional deficiency or a medical condition that needs to be looked at in detail. Uh, it's good to just bring them and uh, get them physically examined to see what the problem is. Uh, it's also uh, a good idea to be aware of vaccinations uh, for, uh, for, for teenagers. It's important to um, receive the HPV vaccination or human papillomavirus. Uh, this vaccination can help in preventing cancer, uh, certain types of cancer in the future. For girls, it can uh, help prevent uh, cervical cancer, among others. Uh, for um, for boys, when they become uh, adults, it can help prevent uh, cancers uh, in the um, anal area, in the oral area, and can also prevent some sexually transmitted disease uh, to happen. And uh, this vaccination uh, is at best given uh, when they are in their teenagers at age 11 or 12 not when they're adult, even though the diseases that uh, we need to prevent them from occur mostly during adulthood, but the prevention works better if they are given uh, at, this, uh, at these ages. And it applies for both girls and boys. Other vaccinations that you could consider uh, or, uh, to give them every year, uh, need, they need to have their flu shot updated, and it's still very prevalent in Indonesia, uh, uh, to, to get some diseases, tropical diseases like typhoid uh, that, uh, that, can, um, that can have uh, infected by uh, contaminated food. Hepatitis is currently an issue as well. Hepatitis A can be prevented with vaccinations and other uh, vaccinations uh, include tetanus and rabies that can be given um, every five years or so. Right, so I think uh, that is all for me, but the key message is to enforce a healthy diet and lifestyle in the teenage years so that it could last uh, as a habit in their adulthood, throughout their adulthood, and, and will be uh, become a valuable investment for their uh, health in the future. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach us at uh, these numbers. Please save these contact details. Uh, you can also drop us a message to our emails.
all right i think that's about it um i think i will return it back to gerald or continue to my son yeah so uh, thank you dr karina for the the first part of the session for today i think that was very helpful and i think um of course we can't talk about the body and body confidence without of course thinking about the mind so that leads us on to the next section uh miss maizan uh, who is a psychologist and counselor will talk to us a little bit about uh the yeah the relationship between the body and the mind especially uh for growing teens miss maizan thank you gerald uh, i will start by sharing my screen Okay, can I, uh, everyone see my screen right now? Okay, great. Uh, so, good morning. My name is Maizan. Uh, I am a clinical psychologist in the practice clinic. Uh, and today I would like to talk more about the connection between social media and body image, which leads to eating disorders. Okay, without further ado. Oh, sorry. So let's start from the recent findings relating to these topics. Uh, apparently, 43% uh, of adolescents in the US uh, stated that they are less satisfied or less happy about their body uh, appearance following the pandemic. And another recent studies also reported that there are strong uh, connections eh, between the increased use of social media and negative body image evaluations among teenagers. So body image evaluations here refer to how uh, teenagers give uh, their assumptions and perceptions towards their, their body or physical appearance. So actually like how social media can negatively affect your teen's body image uh, is quite sensible since there are three phenomena that can be the causes uh, for that. The first one is relating to social comparison. So it it is a term for sociological self-esteem where humans tend to uh, give value over themselves uh, through comparing with others. And with social media right now, as we all know, it's very easy to stay updated with all of the posts and videos that are posted by people from all over the world. So basically, there is no limitation right now for people to compare themselves with other people. And the numbers of likes and yeah, the numbers of followers the type of feedbacks that each person get in their posts in social media uh, are the easiest uh, ways yeah, to to compare within each other so those comparisons would induce the feeling of inferiority or superiority uh, which uh, when teenagers feel inferior about something it is natural for them to try to resonate uh, the problems itself and since the social media are visual based tool so it's easy for them to put the association with physical appearance itself and then the second one is uh, the amount of misleading information uh, that can widely spread by trusted people in social media so trusted people here refers to uh, people who have massive amount of followers uh, in social media. Well, of course, there are loads of important uh, people in social media who are constantly uh, producing uh, great and valuable contents. But unfortunately, there are also some influencers uh, that intentionally or unintentionally uh, spread some uh, let's say not so correct opinions about a uh, healthy lifestyle or uh, beauty standards. It can be harmful for teenagers as they have more vulnerability to trust about the opinion from someone who they are looking up to, uh, including influencers online. And then the third one is relating to to conformity pressure so uh, compared to the other uh, life stages yeah, uh, uh, age, uh, so age levels in life uh, teenagers are more prone to uh, have the strong urge to be um, included by the society so that's why in order to be recognized uh, by others they think they would need to dress certain way to look like a certain way uh, so um, there, yeah, they would have more recognitions and they would participate more in the society. But the thing with social media is the beauty standards that they put there sometimes can be unrealistic 
because all of uh, the filters that's happening there, yeah, uh, all of the editing that's been going on. So in the end, uh, it's easy for them to feel less confidence about themselves uh, because they their look is not up to the standard uh, with what uh, the majority, let's say, of like uh, people who consider to be attractive online. Okay, so uh, with this negative body image, it can be harmful later if it remains unresolved because it can be a great contributor to the development of eating disorder. Okay, so eating disorders itself is a serious and can be life-threatening conditions uh, that are relating to persistent eating behaviors that would negatively impact our physical and mental health and the ability to do their routines. Uh, these are three common eating disorders. Uh, the first one is anorexia nervosa. So it is characterized by extreme weight loss uh, due to constant unhealthy eating behaviors. Yeah? So they tend to starve themselves. Uh, they tend to do excessive exercises and they really have like a very negative association with food. Uh, so they would be very skinny, but they don't feel that they are skinny uh, because they still think that they are not skinny enough to be attractive to others. So it's driven by their pathological fear of gaining weight. And then the second one is binge eating. So it is actually the most common uh, eating disorder during the pandemic. So it's when teenagers uh, here uh, lose their controls over their eating behavior. So they would tend to eat loads of food in such a short time, which then, uh, yeah, like with consuming loads of food in a short time, like you would tend to feel guilty and shame uh, for yourself after a while, since you feel that you lose your uh, ability uh, to control such a simple activity. And if it's going on for a long time, it would lead into obesity. And the third one is bulimia nervosa. So it's like an episodic, uh, a condition of binging and purging. So at first they would tend to do the binge eating behavior, which is uh, eating a lot of food in such a short time, but then would follow by uh, purging behavior, uh, including uh, inducing vomit or uh, taking laxative pills to get out, uh, to let the, the calories out of their body immediately. Okay, so uh, if it's going on for a long time, of course, eating disorders can be very harmful since uh, it would co, uh, co what's it called? Since it, since it would lead into uh, another uh, mental and physical conditions. Uh, the first one is mood disorders. So people, uh, teenagers who have eating disorders, as what I mentioned before, the predictor is uh, the negative uh, body image yeah, or low self-esteem uh, about themselves. So uh, when they feel insecure about themselves, they would be more vulnerable to, uh, to, to get the stress or anxiety symptoms. And if it's going on for a long time, if it gets into the stage where it can be overwhelming, the suicidal thoughts and suicidal ideations behaviors would follow, such as self-harming uh, behaviors. And of course, it can be very dangerous uh, to leave it like this because they would uh, continue to think negatively about themselves and maybe yeah, like uh, the things that we are not expecting them to do would happen. And then uh, with the lack amount of nutrition and uh, the lack of sleep yeah, and constant negative thoughts that's been going on uh, inside their minds, it would be hard for them to concentrate on their uh, daily life. So uh, yeah, like usually it would, real, uh, it would have like a strong associa associations with their performance at school in the end. So uh, yeah, like the ability to listen attentively to the other people would uh, decrease so that's why uh, some problems relating to attention and concentration would happen and then it would have their own impact as well towards the relationship uh, 
since again it's relating to this low self-esteem that they have uh, people with low low self-esteem tend to feel insecure about themselves and others as well so whenever they are doing interactions they would always think that the other person would constantly give judgment towards them and they wouldn't feel very confident to build trust or a great quality of relationships uh, between them and uh, their peers or their family and based on studies as well uh, teenagers who are having uh, eating disorders uh, they are more prone to get uh, into uh, impulsive uh, coping mechanisms such as uh, alcohol and drug abuse and as what uh, Dr. Karina mentioned earlier and later Jocelyn would talk more about that as well uh, having eating disorders and uh, prolonged negative body image situations would have a serious impact on physical health. Okay, so these are some tips that could help uh, teenagers that are currently battling with these conditions. The first one is to have an open discussion yeah, about body positivity and also uh, model uh, a healthy lifestyle uh, in front of them. So uh, really hear, yeah, really listen about the conditions that they are having. Like before, uh, Gerald said the uh, the daughter uh, explaining about like someday the, uh, she is feeling beautiful, but the next day she would feel hideous. So try to talk more about this uh, phenomenon and uh, maybe share as well about your experiences uh, when you are uh, going through the puberty as well and try to talk uh, openly about uh, the way uh, to get out of the situations and how to support them personally. And then the second one would be give a constant reminder to your uh, to your teenagers about their per, uh, personal strengths. So sometimes it's easy for them when they are feeling fragile at that moment to really think about all of the negative things that are uh, relating to them. So maybe parents can help them to get out of that situations by giving compliments to other types of uh, strengths or qualities that your children have that is not relating to the physical. Uh, conditions and then avoid using uh, what's called like weight jokes and harsh criticism on uh, children's uh, body figures uh, because it could affect uh, the, the, yeah, the, the body image uh, condition of the children itself and then please keep track on their daily routines because sometimes like teenagers have the problems of repression as well so they are not uh, going to immediately talk about their problems to their parents usually so keep on track whether uh, they're, they're sleeping enough uh, they are eating well uh, and try to talk uh, to them uh, whenever you notice that there are something that's uh, quite different and then if you already know yeah, uh, maybe you are, your children already experience uh, some symptoms of stress or physical conditions that's relating to negative body image or uh, eating disorders maybe it's wiser to uh, contact professional help uh, talk to your physicians uh, nutritionists uh, psychologists about the condition so uh, these professionals can help you and your children to really find like a a, a, an op appropriate uh, way out of the problem so. okay so i think that's all from me uh, if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me or the team of good pra practice itself uh, through this context okay so i will return it to you gerald thanks so much uh miss mahizan and uh yeah, we, we've been talking about this issue more and more among faculty as well and uh, you know yeah the importance of being incredibly careful about the things that we both criticize and in, and even the, the compliments that we can give our kids you know we, we always think if we give a kid we give our kid a compliment uh, that's a good thing but sometimes if we're complimenting the wrong thing, um, that can be just as just as uh, as harmful to their to their development as uh, as as sort of harsh criticism. So yeah, no, thank you so much, uh, Miss Maizan, for that. We're going to hand over now to, of course, you know, this all comes down, or a lot of it comes down to uh, both exercise and nutrition, and sort of flipping that mindset in our kids from that 
uh, perspective of, oh, I need to go on a diet to the mindset of, oh, I need to have a healthy, nutritious diet. <laughs> and then that's, that the word diet itself is such a, such a loaded word. But uh, fortunately, we have Miss Jocelyn here, a nutritionist, to help us navigate those, uh, those waters. Miss Jocelyn, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Gerald. Um, let me... Oh, can I get host access? Um, apparently... Sorry. I lost host access for some reason. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Um, so today I'll be talking to you about nutrition versus dieting. Um, this is what I asked your kids to think about. Why, are, why do they want to lose weight? Do they want to lose weight because of what they see on the social media? So they must know, and you must also know, that a lot of the things that are on social media are curated or fake. Uh, they shouldn't be comparing themselves to the photos on social media because they're highly posed or edited photos. Um, there's lots of apps out there and social media feeds that, you know, with a click of a button, you're a completely different person. Um, it's best to unfollow accounts that make them feel bad. Uh, these are two examples of uh, social media accounts that I do follow. Um, Adriana Blomfit and Just Get Dot Fit uh, because they, they promote um, healthy body image. Um, you can see here, you know, uh, with Adriana Blomfit, she's saying here, if you can read, when we pose and stay still, tense, sit upright, hold our breath and adjust our clothing, our body may look a certain way. And then in another instance, when we move normally, relax, sit comfortably, breathe naturally and adjust our clothing, our body may look another way. Um, and then here with we'll Just Get Dot Fit, uh, you can see here, there's an image of her, her real image and then with the fake image. The fake image with, uh, with the app, um, I mean, her hair is more puffy, she's a bit slimmer, she has a nicer tan, you know. This is just very subtle, but I mean, uh, a lot of social media filters out there can do a lot more than this, uh, which is why uh, you shouldn't really be using them um, in the first place. Um, and is it because they think they're overweight? So a lot of people think that they're overweight, but technically they're not. Um, one way of uh, determining whether you are overweight is through using the body mass index. So the BMI formula is body weight in kilos divided by height in meter square. Um, you could, as, as kids, uh, you, we can track it to using a growth curve though. So uh, according to the CDC, uh, if, if your children fall within the 5th to 85th percentile, they are considered in the, within the healthy weight range. Um, there is a limitation to this though. So if your if your child does a lot of uh, goes to the gym a lot, um, lifts a lot of weight, and is very muscular, um, then they tend to have a higher BMI because uh, muscle weighs more than fat. So they might be misclassified as overweight or obese, but they actually do have a healthy body. Um, if you can see here. Uh, the 10 year old boy who has a BMI of 21 would be categorized as overweight. But if the 10 year old boy has a BMI of 18, then um, he would be considered as healthy weight. So uh, we can track this over time also. So, and this is something that we can do in the clinic or you can do yourselves at home. Um, you can calculate the BMI of your child. Um, and see whether the, uh, he or she falls within the uh, 5th to 85th percentile. So uh, one thing to think about is what are you or what are they doing to lose weight? Are they thinking short term? Do they lack food choices or are they focusing on the scale of the weight and they don't have any life balance? Or are they uh, having flexibility with food and lifestyle? Are they appreciating the small wins? Are they creating good habits? And are they enjoying the journey? If they're following a fad diet, then um, they should know that fad diets usually lead to yo-yo dieting. They usually uh, promise a quick fix. 
They usually promote magic foods or combinations of foods. They have a one size fit all mentality. They're very low calorie and exclude food groups or nutrients. They follow rigid rules and focus on weight loss. And although they can help you lose weight in the short term, it's difficult to sustain. And uh, essentially, if you follow them for long term, you'll deprive yourself of a lot of essential nutrients. Uh, so some examples of bad diets are low calorie liquid diets, such as the Deuce Detox or the Maple Syrup Diet. And uh, the Indonesian Mayo Diet was quite, um, a lot of people were following this a few years back. And this is also known as the No Salt Diet. Um, and then there's also the low carb diet, such as ketogenic and Atkins diet. Here are just some examples of bad diets out there, but there's uh, many, many more. So these are some of the health consequences of fat diets. There's dehydration, uh, anemia, weakness and fatigue, uh, nausea and headaches, constipation, hair loss, um, inadequate vitamins and mineral intake, which can lead to malnutrition, uh, stunted growth. So your, your children might not grow as tall as they should if they follow fat diets, um, reduced muscle mass, hormonal disruption. So some, um, some of your children uh, the female children, for example, might not, not have their menstruation and their menstruation might stop uh, if they follow fat diets and they lose weight too quickly. Um, as well, and also inflammation might occur. So um, fat diets aren't enjoyable and they're not sustainable. Because of that, that's why the yo-yo diet effect occurs. So the yo-yo diet is when you lose weight, but then you regain it back. Um, it's because fad diets don't teach you how to build good habits. It doesn't teach you how to build good relationships with food. Um, fad diets are very low in calorie. So when you're on them, your metabolism slows down. And then so when you get off them and you want to eat a normal food again, um, you're, you tend to regain the weight, but you might also gain back even more weight than you previously lost. Also, because fat diets um, make you omit certain foods, um, you feel deprived. So once you're able to eat the food again, you might overeat them. Um, and that's also what causes you to gain even more weight than you had lost before by following the fat diet. Um, you shouldn't be labeling food as bad or good. So instead, you should be thinking of food choices as food that you can eat every day or sometimes. So everyday foods are healthy foods that give you vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And um, sometimes foods are foods that are high in saturated fat, added salt, and sugar. Um, so the amount of sometimes food for everyone is actually very different. Um, there's some people that, that need to limit uh, sometimes food to one times a week, uh, or there's some, even, some people that can have sometimes food 20% of their food choice and still lose weight. So this all depends on a lot of factors such as age, weight, height, gender, body composition, activity level, and genetics. This is an example of a healthy lunchbox with everyday foods. So you can see here, you know, there's the fruits, the banana, um, the vegetables, there's cut up vegetables. Um, with the dairy, there's a yogurt here. Um, and meat, there's, or, or meat alternative, there's eggs as a protein source um, with grains and cereals of food there's the whole meal sandwich and then there's water as a drink so fruits um, fruits are nutritionally beneficial because they're a good source of carbohydrates vitamin c potassium and dietary fiber so examples of everyday foods which are fruits are all fresh fruits and frozen fruits and canned fruits that are packed in their own juices uh, sometimes food would be the fruits canned in syrups and dried fruits. With vegetables, uh, vegetables are nutritionally beneficial because they're a good source of vitamin A, C, folate, and dietary fiber. Um, and you'll get more antioxidants and health benefits if you include a variety of colors of vegetables at each meal. So try to get at least three colors of vegetables on your, on your plate um, if you can. Um, with with these with vegetables, so everyday foods would be all fresh, frozen, steamed, 
or cooked vegetables that, that have been cooked in healthy oils such as olive oil, avocado oil, sunflower oil, or canola oil. And sometimes foods would be the deep fried vegetables such as tempura. With dairy or lactose free alternatives, uh, they're a good source and they're beneficial for us because they're our best food source of calcium. Um, they're also a good source of protein and vitamin B12. Um, and everyday foods uh, would be the non-fat and low-fat milk, non-fat or low-fat yogurt, low-fat cheese, calcium fortified almond milk, soy milk or um, uh, oat milk. So one thing to uh, look for is the calcium fortified fortified ones though, because uh, there's many out there that are not calcium fortified. Um, with the sometimes food, it would be the whole milk, full fat cheese and cheese spreads, cheese, uh, cream cheese, yogurt that's made out of whole milk, ice cream and frozen yogurt. With the meat or meat alternatives, so these are nutritionally beneficial for us because they're our best food source of protein. Um, they're also a good source of vitamin B12, zinc, and iron. So this is what will prevent anemia. Um, and also a good source, and if you have a lot of oily fish in your diet, then this is also a good source of iodine, omega-3 fatty acids, and vitamin D. Um, if you include nuts and seeds, this is a good uh, source of vitamin E. Uh, everyday foods for meats and meat alternatives would be fish, poultry, beef, and pork that have been trimmed to their fat, extra lean ground beef, beans, omega-3 eggs and egg whites, tofu, tempeh, and dry roasted nuts and seeds. Uh, with the sometimes foods, these would be the deep fried ones, so deep fried fish or chicken, and the highly processed ones, such as uh, chicken or fish nuggets, hot dogs, sausage, hamburgers, bacon, uh, beef, and, and then the ones with, uh, with fat that haven't been trimmed, so the beef and pork that haven't been trimmed to their fats. Uh, with the grains and cereal foods, uh, these are nutritionally beneficial for us because they're our main food source of carbohydrates. So that's why they're omitted from the low carb diet. But actually, carbohydrates are our first source of energy, which is why it's, uh, it's important to actually have carbohydrates in our diet. Um, and uh, grains and cereal foods are also a good source of dietary fiber, thiamine, and folate. Um, everyday foods for grains and cereals are sourdough or whole grain breads, pita and tortillas, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, oatmeal, and high fiber cereals. So you'll know if the, the cereal is high fiber if you look at the nutrition information panel and it's over five grams per serve. Um, and the sometimes foods for this would be the white bread, donuts, muffins, croissants, crackers, cookies, cakes, pies, and the low fiber cereals. In terms of water, um, we, are, we all know that it's nutritional beneficial for us to drink water. Um, it's essential for life. Um, it's required for digestion, absorption, and transportation. So uh, it helps us regulate our body temperature and eliminate waste products. So that's why it's important to drink uh, enough water to prevent constipation. Um, uh, ideally, we should drink at least two liters of water per day but more uh, during hot weathers or when uh, you exercise to replace the water that you lost through sweat. So everyday drinks would be um, water, infused water, unsweetened coconut water, non-fat or low-fat milk, unsweetened iced tea and lemonade, 100% fresh vegetables and or fruit juice. Uh, with the sometimes drinks, this would be the full cream milk, soda, sweetened teas and lemonades, and fruit drinks. So, if you want to know, these are the general guidelines of how many serves of each food groups um, your, your child might need um, based on their age and gender. Um, please note though, though that these are general guidelines. So um, if we can start off from here, but then after that, it would be adjusted based on uh, other factors such as their physical activities, genetics, and individual dietary preferences. So for example, um, if your child is uh, very physically active, then we would uh, um, add one or two, three more servings uh, to their diet. Um, if they are experiencing a growth spurt, then instead of following the 12 to 13 age range, then they should be following the 14 to 18 uh, age range in terms of recommended uh, servings of each food group. 
Um, and it's also important to eat a wide variety of nutritious foods from the five food groups every day. So it's no, no one food has all the nutrition that you need. So that's why it's important to have a variety of, of food um, that goes for everything. So with vegetables, you know, um, you could have the cooked vegetables, or the salads and the pureed uh, vegetable soups or the vegetable juice. Um, these are all the equivalents. So, I mean, one day you might want to have um, half a cup cooked of vegetables and then next meal for, uh, for lunch, you might want to have a salad. Um, so these are the equivalents of uh, per, per serve. Um, in terms of protein, you know, there's the uh, 65 grams of uh, cooked lean meat would be equivalent to 80 grams of cooked poultry, um, 100 grams of cooked fish, uh, one cup of cooked beans, lentils or peas, um, two eggs, 170 grams of tofu, 30 grams of nuts and seeds, and 85 grams of tempeh. In terms of fish, I mean, in terms of fruits, um, one cup of diced um, or cooked fruit would be uh, equivalent to a medium apple, uh, orange pear, banana. So one way of knowing this is usually the size of your fist um, or two um, small fruits. So uh, two kiwis, apricots or plums. And then with the grains, um, one slice of bread. So uh, the brain is preferably whole grain. The, the bread is preferably whole grain. Um, or it could be 30 grams of wheat cereal flakes or muesli or half a cup of cooked rice, pasta, noodles, blender, porridge, uh, quinoa, barley, or samoa, lina. Uh, in terms of dairy, uh, it could be one cup of low-fat milk for a calcium-fortified milk alternative, um, 200 grams of low-fat yogurt, or two slices of hard cheese. And what about fats? A lot of people think that you know, you're not allowed to have fats uh, to be healthy, but actually you should be including fats in your diet. Um, there's healthy fats, which are olive oil, canola oil, sunflower oils, avocado oil, peanut butter, almond butter, avocado. Um, so you should actually be having uh, one and a half to two serves of unsaturated uh, spread and oil per day. So this would be one serving is um, seven grams of olive, uh, canola, sunflower or avocado oil or 10 grams of peanut or almond butter oil. Um, so although you should be eating uh, everyday food most of the time, um, you can enjoy sometimes food in moderation. So, but these, when I say moderation, it means, you know, based on the recommended serving size. Uh, so these are, are examples of recommended serving size of sometimes foods. Um, you know, an ice cream would be two scoops, which would be around 75 grams. Sausages, around two thin sausages, 30 grams of salty crackers, two to three um, sweet biscuits, one donut or muffin, which is around 40 grams, uh, 40 grams slice of cake, 25 grams of chocolate, or 60 grams of french fries. So here's a fun fact though. Um, if your child is within healthy weight range and very active, they can actually have um, up to three serves of sometimes food per day. So, um, and, and still be healthy. So that's just something to think about. Um, so the real answer to reaching a healthy weight and maintaining it there long term is a balanced eating plan combined with moderate physical activity. Um, if you see here on the food plate, uh, you know, this can be your, your dinners at home. Um, just make sure, you know, half your food plate is filled with non-starchy vegetables or salad um, and try to get uh, at least three different uh, types out there. Um, you know, a quarter of your plate would be the lean proteins um, and another quarter of your plate would be the high fiber uh, carbohydrates. Include a little bit of oil in it, such as the olive oil. Um, and then, you know, uh, with, the, with the snacks, you can give snacks to your kids um, or even for yourself, which would be the, the fruits and the yogurts as a snack or dessert. Uh, it's good to be active every day too. Uh, so by being active, you know, um, I don't mean doing extreme exercising or pushing the body to the limit. Um, being active doesn't even necessarily mean going to the gym or playing a sport. It's just about, you know, trying out different activities, uh, moving your body and then finding one that you enjoy. Um, you know, it could be as simple as walking your dog, jump roping, dancing or playing tag. As long as you enjoy it and you can do it on a regular basis. So you repeat it 
to make it make a habit and that that will stick uh, long term then you will up to being active 30 to 90 minutes per day and this depends on the level of intensity um, as a closing remark for for them you know it, they should be focusing on what their body can do uh, they should be avoiding harmful forms of media uh, they should stop labeling food as good or bad and uh, they should educate themselves about the different types of health just remember that no one diet fits all it should be customized according to yours and their individual nutrient requirements. So this, this is based on age, weight, height, gender, activity level, body composition, genetics, and metabolism, and lifestyle. Um, and by doing this, then they, them and yourselves also can lose weight in a healthy and sustainable manner. I keep on saying them and, and you because essentially, this is something that uh, you as parents can do to help your kids uh, promote a healthy lifestyle. Be a good role model to your kids. Eat a healthy, balanced diet and be physically active. Uh, don't, don't use diet talk, so uh, try not to say things like, oh, I shouldn't eat this, it's fattening. Don't give food as a reward for good behavior or doing a good job because this will teach children to eat when they aren't hungry. Uh, make sure that um, there's always everyday food available in the house. Uh, let your kids get involved with the grocery shopping, planning the weekly menu, or choosing what to eat. Eat together as a family. Uh, have fun doing family activities together uh, that involve being active, such as wall climbing or biking. And uh, go on, on family outings on the weekend. So you might want to go to Bogor or, or Punjab, you know, for a hike or horseback riding. Um, and that's it for me for today. Thank you very much.